So you probably already know or have experimented yourself that most of the games that you try to create, okay, uh, they directly die after before even being published or being developed. Or while you are doing it, uh, you feel like this may not be a good choice for different reasons. So my name is Marco Pauletta. Right now I'm working at Fivebits, okay, a mobile game development studio in which I, for example, help develop these games that uh, you are seeing right now. And I want to share my insights on this very amazing topic, which is why a lot of Godot games die at the first stage, okay? And for this, I'm gonna be revealing these three keys over here. And this is the first error that a lot of people commit. Focusing too much on the game design before creating an MVP. An MVP is basically a mini, non, minimum viable product. What this means, okay, is that it is a game that is 100% playable, that has no major errors. Uh, you can complete it from point A to point B, okay? But it may not be as polished as an actual final version, okay? So it may not have as many particles or as many twins or as many animations or in general as much content as a full version, but it still has to be something viable, okay? Um, so what happens uh, is that I've seen personally a lot of people, like they create huge game design documents. Once again, game design document is basically that, a document that tells the developers what the game is gonna be about. So they create huge GDDs, okay, how they are usually called, okay? And once again, having a GDD is not bad, it's something completely perfect to have. But they have a GDD of 50 pages, okay? And they have created all that GDD without writing a single line of code or adding a single game object into their actual game. So whenever they want to actually see how this feels, how it actually, if actually people is gonna enjoy the 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 the, the, the fifty page GTD, okay. Whenever they want to put this into the game, it's gonna be a chaos, okay. Uh, because when you actually understand and see if people like your product, if people will enjoy your game, is when you start programming and creating this MVP that we have mentioned. So games are not created in a GDD, games are created in the engine itself. And this may sound a little bit simple, but you don't know how many people I've come across that they have a super long GDD and I've told them, okay, do you have a prototype, something that I can take a look at? No, I don't. A lot of times, whenever you are writing these things, you don't consider like the whole picture, okay? You just consider what you want to show, what you want to talk about, but the true thing happens when you start creating the game. Of course, you still have to have a plan, a direction you want to follow, that's perfectly fine, but uh, do not spend two weeks, I don't know, writing a 50, uh, G a 50 page GDD, okay? That's not gonna really work out very well. What you can do instead is write a GDD, okay? That is a little bit smaller, okay? Let's say something like, I don't know. It's not a matter of a number of pages. It's just a matter of understanding this concept of, let's say, 10 pages or something that tells you, okay, um, these are the, the uh, for example, it contains the the theme. So what is it about? Or actually what is called a high concept. So what your game is in one, two, three sentences, basically also called elevator pitch. This is what you may have there. Then the core loop or loops, okay? So for example, okay, the player walks, kills enemies, buys better equipment, repeats, or whatever it is, okay? That could be a loop, for example. Uh, then the core mechanics that you will need. So for example, okay, walking, shooting, whatever it is. Then related to a high concept, the art in general so it's gonna be cartoony is it gonna be more realistic what is it gonna actually be about so all these things okay so as you can see with all this you're gonna actually be able to have a playable version uh way easier okay and then when you start to start to have a playable version you can actually start creating your gdd the things that people differentiate or completely divide 
creating your GDD. They first create their GDD and then they create the game. But in reality, how this would be is that, okay, you create your GDD. Okay, and here we have the game. And both are connected. So the GDD determines how the game will look like, but also the game itself, once while you are playing it, will define how the GDD will look like, okay? So it's something iterative, not something that is fixed, you create one time and you never change, okay? Uh, they kind of have to talk to each other. So to sum this point up, have a minimum viable product, a prototype, something that you can play as soon as possible. For that, do not spend endless days just designing and creating again design document or whatever it is or thinking about the best idea. Just get something playable, see how it feels, grab feedback from people, and from there start adding more stuff into your GTD. It's not something static that you create a GTD, then you create the game. It's something that um, they both create each other. The GTD creates the game and the game itself, once you are playing it, also will modify the game design itself. Now, a second mistake I see a lot is not using code templates or plugins. They basically want to do everything from scratch, okay? So you already know that whenever you are creating a game, what happens is that you basically have a limited amount of resources. Either it is money, either it is time, okay? Whatever it is, you have limited resources. And whenever you try to do everything from scratch, these resources basically decrease over time and you are not spending them in the wisest way possible. So for example, whenever you need a system, okay, of wherever it is, a lot of times you can find it either in a tutorial which, which may have the source code, they are linked and you can directly use it. Um, or you can, for example, in Jersey Unity or the engine that you use has an asset store, even in Godot, you can find something similar. You can find for example, a lot of say on system. Oh, but they are too expensive. Okay, you can just look for free ones. They may not be as good as the uh, paid ones, but these will still work pretty well, okay? And take a look at another thing that we have found over here. Inventory systems. These things are really used a lot by RPG games, for example, and you can directly find them over here. You have here another item and inventory system. You have a modern menu. You can even have, um, I think you also have match three games directly here. Once again, you can, you have here complete games that you can download. You say, oh, but $200 is too much. Yeah, but take a look at what this actually includes. Okay, this is a complete game, okay, that you can use for reference for learning how all these things are created and actually do your own stuff. And once again, if you put free, you may be able to find some alternatives. Here, well, this is a UI, and here you have a two, a match, um, a match three game here completely for free. Or another thing that could be not complicated but time consuming is creating a third person controller or any kind of controller. Take a look at this, okay? You have even this one completely free, officially from Unity, okay, and contains a third person controller or even you can turn into a first person i believe uh so it has everything it has animations it has logic it even has mobile a, a mobile version with joystick and all that so once again it's amazing everything that you have or even the last thing I have here is a settings menu so you have like assets for everything and i'm not telling you here okay do not write one line of code ever again i'm telling you use these resources these templates these plugins uh, to to actually help you use your resources a little bit better because if you spend less resources on on the thing that we have mentioned creating a seven load system creating an inventory system all that what will cause is that you will have more resources to do other stuff to either create a way better gdd to design better mechanics to have more resources to market your game i don't know whatever it is but do not spend time on a task on something that you can do in uh, five minutes rather than in 30 minutes okay it has no reason no no value you have no valid reason to actually do that in anything and the third point is very connected to the first one but it has a different approach and it's basically not having an mvp fast and you may say okay I, you already mentioned this yes 
but this is for marketing reasons in specific not, not so much for design reasons what happens is that as we have already mentioned creating games in general is as most things in life are pretty expensive in terms of resources even if you are an indie developer it's your time which also your time is money in the same time and even more if you are working in a team or whatever it is so what happens is that if you let's say spend three months or actually it's more let's say six months creating something okay and then you basically release this okay but you had no feedback throughout this six month the only perspective that you have that probably your game is good or that everything is cool is from your own team or from few people that have tried out you don't have the full picture so when people start playing it they may like it they may not you don't know and a lot of cases what happens is that what we see as developers what we see as teams is not the same thing that the, the usual players uh, see or feel like uh, so that's why they sometimes may end up not liking the final product so rather than spending for example no, six months okay in in just doing one game Maybe spend at most, let's say, one month, if it is a bigger game. Spend one month, so have your MVP fast. Try it out, okay? You basically run a few ads. What I've seen is that a lot of companies, uh, for example, when I work with Voodoo, one of the biggest mobile game development companies, what they do is you create a game, they market it in a very low budget. I, I don't really know the exact amount, but maybe from something like uh 75 dollars to 200 dollars depending on the situation so something like that they spend that on ads on on facebook on meta basically facebook instagram and all that and with that what you will have is feedback and what this will help you actually do or or realize or decide is okay do we iterate on the prototype on this game on this mvp or do we kill it depending on the famous word kpis or key potential indicators okay so if people showed good kpis okay it means that we are actually gonna be iterating on the game okay but if people did not show very good kps well not people but the campaigns that did not show very good kps we have to kill the game and continue with other stuff it was demonstrated a lot by uh, this is more related to the mobile game development market but it, it can still be applied to a lot of things is that if you have a minimum viable product and it has literally no sign of being a good prototype or a product that will actually sell and that people will like it's mostly not likely that it will ever happen because the idea itself, the core of the idea and the core of the game design is not that good. I'm not saying it's not something actually bad or you have to feel, to be, um, to feel bad about it because all these things are, let's say, about bullets, okay? Let's say, oh, that I wanted to create a bullet, but, you know, I'm not very good at this. Um so every game that you create is a bullet that you spend so okay this bullet okay this bullet was not worth it but maybe the second bullet okay it's not that good either okay but it, it was a little better and maybe your third bullet it does work properly okay and and you were able to have very good kpi so that's the the cycle of okay you create something okay and based on the feedback, you iterate on that version or you basically kill it, okay? Um, for example, if you take a look at Block Jump 3D, which is a super popular voodoo game, right now it looks amazing. All the screenshots uh, with, like, all the assets, okay? Everything. But I can tell you, okay, because when I started playing this, I was actually playing the first version. It didn't look like this, like you you didn't have these toys it, they had the mvp they were testing out the mvp testing the concept itself of the game and when they saw that it was actually bringing amazing kps then they decided to iterate more on the game but not until actually um having those kpis and though and that actual feedback from the audience so those are the three main mistakes that you have to avoid not having an mvp fast 
try to get something as fast as possible, grab feedback and based on that feedback, iterate on the game or kill it and move forward. Then start using code templates, plugins, all that so that you can use your resources better. And lastly, stop focusing too much on the game design or basically spending all your resources in creating a 50 page uh, game design document and uh, spend a little bit less time create something that has for example these parts over here start creating your game and then when you while you create your game you will understand what things need to be modified from this initial doc so those those were my uh, my, my three keys that I wanted to share with you in this video and I'm gonna see you in the next one.